it's that nerd Ryan here, and today we're going to talk about Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. Uh, sorry that it took a while to get back to this, but you know things happen. Borderlands trailers drop and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to talk about, in my opinion, the weakest Harry Potter movie. Now I love all the Harry Potter movies all the way through, and by Harry Potter I mean Harry Potter. Uh, Fantastic Beasts are kind of hit or miss, but. Um, for Half-Blood Prince, I do feel that it is the weakest one. Uh, there is a lot of behind-the-scenes reasons why that happened. I think this is like a much uh, <clears throat> agreed-upon thing in the fandom. Uh, with stuff like Daniel Gradcliffe not being sober through the whole thing. I think he said himself. Um, and just some other issues. So basically what this one is, is Harry's in his sixth year at Hogwarts. Uh, Voldemort is now known to be back. Uh, people are prepping and preparing for this war that is going to happen. Um, Dumbledore brings in an old professor named Professor Slughorn, basically to get Harry to get inside his head and figure out what Tom Riddle did at Hogwarts, which was creating Horcruxes, which is tearing apart your soul and hiding it in different things. Uh, so that you can never die. During this, um, Dumbledore is slowly dying due to one of the Horcrux that he has, and he is basically training Harry personally, this one, to uh, live up to face Voldemort. We also see uh, he's entrusting Snape with a certain thing, that isn't revealed till the end, and Draco is now being trained by Voldemort, or told by Voldemort to kill Dumbledore. Uh, with that too, we get, of course, some of the funny Harry Potter moments, like Ron getting love potioned, and becoming, um, I believe, the keeper, if I remember right, for uh, Gryffindor, even though we get no Quidditch in this <laughs> movie besides that um but yeah we get to see that we get to see harry and Ginny's romance begin to bud um and harry deal with the fact that sirius is gone at the end um instead of draco killing dumbledore it ends up being snape and it turns out that he was apparently a double agent the whole time I know what actually happens, we're going to talk about that in the 8th movie, but turns out he's a, uh, you know, a double agent. And we also, I also forgot to add in the subplot, because it's not really focused on, except for at the beginning and then at the end, along with certain other tiny aspects. Harry finds a book that had annotations in it of uh, somebody named the Half-Blood Prince. He learns a dangerous spell and stuff like that uh and it's revealed at the end that snape was the half-blood prince so yeah this one like i said it's kind of like the one that i feel like skipping half the time there's some good port parts in it but a lot of it this is definitely the weakest harry potter film as i said um i i think the inclusion of slughorn was a fun character uh, getting to see Voldemort's past and what made him Voldemort was pretty cool. Um, but they do cut out a good portion of that from the book of, like, more other things about Voldemort's past. But, uh, yeah. So, I'm gonna go ahead and give this movie a 6 out of 10. Um, which I feel like I want to give it a little bit higher. But I do want to exemplify that I feel this is the weakest of the Harry Potter movies. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and follow me on all my social media down below. It's that nerd Ryan signing.